How's it going everyone? Dr. Tom Walters here from Rehab Science. Today on, the, uh, on this video we're going to take a look at tennis elbow. Now tennis elbow is a condition that affects a lot of people and unlike the name sounds it doesn't actually uh, always affect people that play tennis. Uh, the, most of the patients that I see with this disorder actually are just maybe working a computer or something like that. Maybe they're doing something that involves repetitive movements like typing or writing or things of that nature. So. Tennis elbow involves the wrist and finger extensors, which are the muscles that straighten our fingers out and lift our wrist up. And they run here on the top side of the forearm. Those muscles all run across the top side of the forearm and then attach up here on the lateral epicondyle. So if you have tennis elbow, or if you're wondering if you might have it, you would tend to feel it kind of up here on the outside of the elbow. If you were standing with your arms out your side, you'd feel it out here on the outside of the elbow. And if you were to touch in that region, when we are looking to see if someone actually has this, I'll go through and palpate or touch those tendons and look to see does it reproduce their familiar symptoms and usually it's very tender and sort of a sharp pain in this area. When you're carrying out activities it can range from sharp to uh, maybe a dull ache if you're not doing something but you tend to fill it with uh, a variety of activities and that involve putting load on these wrist extensor muscles and on that tendon. And again, it could be a sharp pain, and then it could be dull at times. Uh, maybe if you're not using it and you're just at rest, it might kind of ache and throb and things like that. So this condition involves a tendon. It's a tendon dysfunction. We call that a tendinopathy. We used to say tendinitis, but things have changed, and the research on this has changed, and now we call it a tendinopathy, which is really just an umbrella term to say that there's some sort of pathology of the tendon. Now what we know about tendons is that they tend to respond well to loading. So a resistance training program, which might sound sort of counterintuitive because you're like, well, I got this issue because I was putting stress on the tendon and now you're telling me to stress it more with resistance training. And really the key to it is just the amount of stress you put on it. If you put the right amount of stress, the tendon will adapt positively and will get better. So there's a progression of resistance training exercises we'll go through to help this condition. And I'll show some other things that might help a little bit too. Um, but you just want to kind of explain how we progress through these. And, you know, with something like a tendinopathy, some of the research studies say that it can take up to 12 weeks to fully recover. So just make sure you're patient with it too. Uh, they can take a little while to get better. So let's start with just some things uh, out there outside of resistance training that you could try. So one is a wrist extensor and finger extensor stretch. Sometimes this feels good for a short period of time and it helps a lot of people. So if you are having an issue through here, you, what you can do is you would take your wrist and your fingers into flexion. So extension is up this way, flexion is this way. So what I do is I'm gonna bring my, take my other hand and pull those muscles down. I also wanna make sure my elbow is all the way straight. If I bend my elbow, it'll put these muscles on slack and I won't get a stretch. So you wanna straighten your elbow and then pull your wrist down into flexion with the other hand until you feel a stretch across the top side of the forearm. Like other muscle stretches, usually we recommend that people do these two to four times and hold for somewhere between 15 to 30 seconds. So give it a try and see if it helps. Another thing is that the nerves that exit our neck, they form, the nerve roots that come from our neck form these big nerves that go down our arm. Maybe you've heard of the median nerve that goes to your carpal tunnel, or the ulnar nerve is the one that sometimes we bump up, we hit our funny bone. On the top side of the forearm is our radial nerve. And in some people with tennis elbow actually using exercises that help improve the health of that radial nerve can help with tennis elbow symptoms. So the way to do that, this is called nervous system mobilization or some people call it neural flossing. So these are just techniques that put a little bit of pressure or tension on the nerve or help them kind of slide and that's been shown to help people with a variety of, of pain type disorders. So for the radial nerve, what you're gonna do is you're gonna again kind of take your wrist and fingers into flexion and your shoulder is gonna go back into extension. Now that's gonna put tension on the nerve down my arm and down into the top side of my forearm. To make that tension a little bit more, I can take and move my head, side bend it away from the arm that has the pain. Now that'll create sort of a stretch. You feel a stretch for maybe from your neck. I sort of feel it here on the lateral side of my neck, maybe down into your arm and then I can come back off of that. And that's actually called a tension, it's a nerve tensioner because I'm putting tension on the end down by my hand and on the end up by my neck. Now, if your symptoms are really sensitive, there's also nerve flossing. And nerve flossing would be where I put tension, so I've got, I've got my wrist cocked here in deflection to put tension on the nerve. 
In that case, what I'll do is move my neck towards the side that has pain. So I have slack on the nerve here and tension down there. And then I would alternate. So now my wrist will come up. I'll put slack at my wrist and I'll move my head away. And I sort of create this little dance where I kind of go back and forth. And that is called nerve flossing. In one situation, I'm pulling the nerve towards my wrist. In the other situation, I'm pulling it towards my neck. That probably seems like hocus pocus or magic or something, but there are actually cadaver studies on this that we do in anatomy labs where the nerves are pinned in the cadavers and the limbs, the cadavers' limbs are moved through different motions. And we've found that the nerves actually have to glide anywhere from several millimeters to several centimeters. So it's not just a make-believe thing. Your nerves actually slide as you move, and sometimes that can be restricted. So those are two. You've got a wrist finger and flexor stretch, and you've got a radial nerve mobilization. Now, there's three resistance training sort of principles you would work through if you have tennis elbow. If your symptoms are really severe and acute, hurting you at rest kind of all the time there, the first thing are isometric contractions. Isometric contractions are one where there's are, are contractions where there's no movement. So these are, are interestingly uh, in, in tendinopathies where a tendon is involved. Isometric contractions tend to create a, 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 a sort of bit of hypoalgesia, which basically means they can knock pain down. So isometrics are really useful in the beginning, the first couple of weeks of a tendinopathy because they can help sort of calm things down. So what you do is if you have a small dumbbell, probably something in the two to eight pound range is good. If you don't have something like that, maybe just a water bottle that's full of water. You're going to find a, I've got my uh, treatment table here. Anything works, just you wanna be seated like I am now, find a table uh, or a desk or something that you can basically take the arm that has the pain and it will be fully supported except for the wrist. Your wrist and hand would hang off the edge. So for an isometric contraction, I'm gonna take the weight with my good arm and I'm gonna pass it to my injured arm, the painful arm, and I'm just gonna hold it right there so there's no movement. The weight wants to pull me down into wrist flexion. So I'm gonna use my wrist extensors. They're gonna to contract to counteract that weight and hold me in a stable position. Now for isometric contractions, the research recommends that we hold these for anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds and perform four to five of them every day. So while your symptoms are severe, find a weight that you can do. It's okay if you have light to moderate pain. People always ask about this, and uh, the rule of thumb is that it's okay to have a little bit of discomfort while you do this, not sharp pain. If you feel a little bit of discomfort in that spot or through the wrist extensors, that's all right. As long as when you stop exercising, it calms down, and by 24 hours later, you're back to baseline or better than you were the day before. If it's making your pain start going up and up and up, then you're the weight's too heavy or we've got, to, we've got to modify something. Okay, so that's the isometric contraction. When things are starting to calm down and your symptoms are getting better, maybe you don't have them all the time, then you would start to move on to eccentric contractions. Now, sometimes we, we, don't always, we can skip this step and some people can go on to the next, but I'm gonna show all of them because, you know, some people need these eccentrics. So the eccentric contraction is a contraction where my muscles are contracting, but they're getting longer. So it'd be a situation where I'm lowering my wrist, but I'm not gonna do the upward part, which is the concentric contraction. So in this exercise, I'm gonna lift my wrist up like this, just under the weight of my hand, and then I'm gonna use my uninjured hand, pass that to this painful one, and then I'm gonna lower it slowly back down, all the way through full range. When I get to the bottom, my other hand is gonna take that weight, I'm gonna reset, and I'm gonna pass it back. And I'm gonna go through repetitions like that in the neighborhood of eight to 15 repetitions, and I'm gonna do three sets, and I'll do that every other day. So we're not doing every day now, we're going to every other day. Now, the last and final step is a full combined strengthening exercise where you have a concentric and eccentric contraction. So this is what you would do if you were just healthy and you wanted to sort of prevent injury. So this is a good exercise to keep around if you have tennis elbow and it gets better, just to kind of keep it away. Now. For those of you who do have tennis elbow, again, this is the last phase of the sort of rehab program. So now I'm just gonna take the weight and I'm gonna do the full motion. So I'm gonna go through a concentric contraction. These wrist extensors are contracting and shortening, putting tension on that tendon and helping it to heal and building up its capacity so it's less likely to have this issue in the future. And then I'm gonna slowly lower down. And I'm just gonna do real slow contractions like that around six to 12 repetitions, find a weight that's heavy. You know, this one's a little too light for me. It's five pounds, it's not challenging. So I'd wanna go heavier than this. Again, six to 12 repetitions, three 
to four sets and do this every other day or maybe every two days. When your pain is all the way gone, then you could keep this in as a part of your resistance training program. Maybe just do it twice a week just to keep things healthy and strong. Okay, so that's the, those are the, the exercises. You've got a, a wrist and finger stretch. You've got a radial nerve mobilization. And then you've got three types of contractions, which you would just pick one of those based on your level of healing. So if you're really severe, maybe you have the stretch, the radial nerve mobilization, and the isometric contraction. If you're a little bit better, maybe instead of the isometric contraction, you've got the second one, the eccentric. And then as you're getting out farther, maybe you've only got the concentric, eccentric, the full motion uh, at, you know, for dealing with this tennis elbow issue. So I hope you find this video helpful. Uh, if you need help with any other conditions, make sure to check out my uh, Instagram page. I've been on there for a couple of years and ha have a, a, a number of videos and uh, helpful tips about different things. And that link is um, up on, it will be down below. So make sure to check that out. And then there are some other helpful links and resources down below that you can check out too. All right, have a great day. Bye.